CPI just came out and it was awful. Now, awful is very relative, but the markets immediately tanked when it was announced. Literally, NASDAQ is down over 3% currently. The markets just opened 11 minutes ago. Pre-market, it was down 2.5%. It is continuing that loss. So what was expected? CPI was expected to be 8.1%, which was an also down 0.1% over the last month. It reported at 8.3% and up 0.1% month over month. But the worst number that came in was core CPI. Now, core CPI removes food, removes fuel. The reason being, those are the most volatile parts of the CPI index. So it removes the volatile, the highly volatile parts and looks at the core group that's literally something that takes a little bit of time. That was the bad one. It was expected to come in at 6.1% year over year and 0.3% increase month over month. It came in at 6.3% year over year and 0.6% month, month to month. So that's the biggest issue here. And of course, what does that mean? Well, guys, with inflation, how does the Fed fight inflation? They fight it by raising rates. If I were to guess, and of course, this is pure speculation, but there's already been talks about 0.75% increase happening this month in the Fed rate. I think that's a lock based on this information. The Fed is absolutely going to use inflation as an excuse to raise rates. And you've already seen them raise rates a ton in the last year. In fact, in the last year and a half, Look at mortgage rates. We had an average 30-year mortgage of about 2.75% just a, a little over a year ago, and it's now closer to 6%, well over double. So why does that happen? Well, if Fed increases rates, it decreases demand for products. It cr decreases demand for products, less people get employed, unemployment will go up, wages will go down, and it'll bring prices down overall. But before you get all worried about inflation, I'm not trying to say I like inflation, but there are benefits to inflation. And I don't want you to get all worked up and upset and saying, oh my God, inflation is the worst thing ever. Yes, it's not great, but there are benefits to inflation. One, it's not deflation, okay? So what's deflation? Deflation is when the cost of goods are decreasing. Now you might sit there and say, wait, I like the cost of goods decreasing. Understood. But for an economy that's trying to grow, if you knew that if you just waited a little bit longer, your prices of your products will decrease, you would delay purchases as much as possible. That is a contraction to the economy. 70% of this economy is consumer spending. So if all of a sudden everybody sits there and, we're, and thinks to themselves, oh, if I wait just a little bit longer, the prices will be lower, you're going to put off a lot of purchases. That would definitely hurt the economy. So that's why people do not like deflation. Second thing, if you own a home, there are two benefits of inflation on a home. One, if the cost to build your replacement house goes up, guess what happens to the value of your home? It also goes up. It's very obvious that if your house, if you paid 300000 for your house, and now your house to replace it, literally the exact same house, costs $600,000, guess what your house is worth? It's not worth three hundred dollars anymore. It's probably not worth 600000 because of the fact that that would be a brand new home, but it's worth probably somewhere very close to 600000 closer to 600000 than 300000 So that's the first benefit to real estate. Second benefit, when we have inflation, any money that you've borrowed, for example, for your home, that mortgage is set. You are paying that mortgage payment for the 15, 20, 30 years that you chose. But as inflation increases, your income will go up over time. Your nominal dollars, the actual dollars you make. So you're going to pay back the past mortgage at the lower dollar amount with new dollars at a higher amount. So for example, if your mortgage payment is $1,500 a month and you're making $100,000 a year, let's say we had some crazy situation where inflation doubled and your income doubled to $200,000. What's your mortgage payment now? It's still $1,500 a month. So now you're paying $1,500 a month on $200,000 in income versus $100,000. So even though your cost of living has gone up, that actual principal and interest portion of your mortgage is going to stay the same. So the reason I bring this up is, if you're new to this channel, I'm Paul. I'm a value investor. What that means is I like to look at the long-term trends and see where there are disconnects between price and value. I look at the emotional 
jumps in the markets and try to find disconnects in that price and value where price is much lower than the long-term value. I don't look at inflation or anything being good or bad. I just look at them as this is what is, and I have to make decisions based on that. And I use the quantitative aspects of these assets to decide when to buy and when to look forward and look at qualitative aspects for the future. So when it comes to inflation, I understand it hurts the middle class and the poor very, very badly. But if you look back at history, when we've had big surges of inflation, everybody in the long run still does better. The economy regroups and there is a temporary issue that will happen, but it will get better. So how can you fight inflation? Two ways. Save a lot of money. You should be doing that when times are good or bad, but especially when times are good. When times are good, save as much as you can. The reason being is, for the second reason, you want to live well below your means. If you're living well below your means, you can easily afford these bump ups, these sudden increases in the price of goods, right? That is the key there. If you support that, if you do that, you're not going to make emotional decisions. If you happen to get laid off because, because, because unemployment goes higher, you'll be in a better position when unemployment checks come in that you'll be able to live the same lifestyle or close to it if you live well within your means. And this is something I absolutely stress on this channel. Please live within your means. It is the only way to sleep well at night. Yes, it's fun and exciting to buy all the new stuff. Don't get me wrong. I love doing that as well. But if you live within your means, you will have much better quality of life going forward, especially when times are tough. Because we only remember the bad times and the good times for four years. That's the financial memory. So please live within your means. That way, when the bad times happen, you will still be fine. You won't have to make emotional quick decisions that might hinder your long-term ability to retire or live a high quality of life. So inflation is very, very big in the markets right now. But there is some good news here. At the same time of inflation being reported today, the Small Business Sentiment Index came out as well. And it was actually pretty decent. It came out and it actually increased 1.9% in August to 91.8, marking the eighth consecutive month below 48-year average of 98, but it was declining in the first half of the year. So the small business sentiment, now it might be a lagging indicator, which means that it responds to the market news, but it was saying, hey, we feel better about the US economy and going forward. Now that doesn't mean everything's, okay, we're hunky-dory, but when they, service, when they survey these small business owners, they wanna get a pulse on what is going on in the economy and how they see the future. These are still emotional things and they're still responding to short-term reactions to the markets and short-term reactions to unemployment and inflation. But we still have low unemployment, even though unemployment is a lagging indicator. And I would argue that with small businesses, they're probably starting to see better quality of applicants. Because as you know, it was really difficult to hire for a long time. It still is, but it's not as bad as it was before. And I'm sure that's a big factor here in the small business index. So if you like this channel and you like what I'm saying, just remember... We have a long time to live. There are decades and decades of life. Go look back at history. Go look back at the last 20, 30, 40 years. Go look at all the bad times that occurred in the economy. And guess what? We as a country got better. We still got better. Individuals can still do very, very well. In fact, on this channel, I talk about how recessions and bad times are the most opportunistic times for the smart and astute individual and investor. So if you believe that, you need to watch this next video about recessions being the opportunity of a lifetime. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your time.